Hello, sculpture students. Well, here we are. Um, today, uh, we're going to start off with uh, a basic clay form. Hopefully, everybody has the clay uh, that either uh, been provided to you or that you have purchased at the art supply store from your materials list. Uh, now, um, uh, this clay that I have here um, um, is or might be a little bit different than the clay that you have. Uh, but do not worry, um, uh, what we're going to be doing uh, is going to be um, not that difficult. Um, and uh, most clay that we uh, have or that you have probably purchased from maybe another class or from this class uh, will work just fine. Um, so do not worry if my, uh, if my clay is gray and your clay is uh, brown or uh, maybe a lighter tan. Uh, what we don't want is a, a white clay or what's called a porcelain. This is called a stoneware. And as we go along, uh, we're going to talk more and more about clay and what we can do with it. But uh, we're going to start off with just a simple uh, exercise that, so we can play with a sculptural form. Um, a lot of people uh, use this clay or artists or designers or artisans use this clay for uh, 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 pottery or functional items. Uh, but sculptors uh, have been using clay for thousands of years, even prior to the potter or the ceramicist uh, uh, people and us as uh, art. Our ancestors um, were using uh, uh, clay uh, for play, um, and people have been uh, using uh, clay for sculpture uh, ever since the beginning of <laughs> uh, our knowledge of our ancestors. So everything that we know about ourselves uh, from uh, the earliest beginnings of our time and our civilization, um, and it's just in our being, uh, has been probably from clay. Um, so, uh, it's a perfect material for our uh, first project, and uh, it's a perfect material for us to investigate some basic shapes and forms, and how do we play with three-dimensional space? How do we p play with material, and how do we get to know material, develop a relationship material, and how do we uh, actually think about three-dimensional space uh, uh, with uh 3D objects. And we're going to be playing with a lot of different materials, but clay is going to be uh, pretty much uh, one of the fundamental materials that's probably going to be uh, used in majority of our assignments and in our techniques. So, uh, but we're going to start off with a simple exercise so we can already start thinking about shape, uh, uh, shadow, uh, texture, a little bit of technical um, uh, processes on how to work with clay so it can be fired. We are going to be firing these uh, forms that you're going to be making. Um, and um, uh, it's also going to allow us to uh, understand that uh, we need to develop uh, processes or, or, or follow specific process in order for our creativity or our sculpture to survive uh, fully until the end. And if we do these processes correctly, um, and if you learn the uh, properties of clay and other materials that we're going to be using, plaster, uh, um, um, uh, we'll be using foam, and all these other materials, um, uh, then hopefully they can last uh, thousands of years, uh, literally. Uh, we'll also be working with glass as well. So, um, and all these materials that we're going to be working with are, 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 uh, have been uh, used, uh, like I said, for thousands of years. So um, they've really proven the test of time. So even though some of the assignments seem uh, a little technical, uh, maybe a little difficult, uh, well, don't worry, um, because uh, there uh, is always ways that we could uh, achieve the end process, because what's more important is your experience uh, uh, having fun and exploring and, and getting into what uh, uh, we would call the groove of making art. So that's primary, is uh, making sure that you are having a good time while you're doing it. Um, first and foremost, you should also have a um, wire tool here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, uh, that is in your supply list uh, in order to uh, get uh, proper amounts of clay off of uh, your block here. Uh, your block might be a full block or it might be a half size block. Um, but anyways, uh, using the wire tool here is the best way to uh, get uh, clay off uh, accurately and also efficiently. So we're also gonna, always going to want to keep our clay bag. Uh, after we use it or after we take clay out because we don't want that to dry out. So make sure that uh, we have a good twisty tie, okay, and we are constantly keeping that uh, storage uh, bag closed. Uh, what I want you to do to start off with, okay, I want you to grab your wire, to your wire tool, okay, and I want you to kind of like, uh, like you're flossing, right? You're kind of like twisting it around your 
your hand and you can see here right we have a good block of clay um, I'm gonna cut off okay I forgot my finger here I'm gonna cut off a good maybe finger line okay of um, of, uh, of that clay from the very top okay down okay so I would say that's a good three inches or so I want you to okay make sure you have a good um, steady table as well um, that's very important um, um, or at least work on the floor uh, clay is heavy so make sure that it's on something uh, stout sturdy a nice good coffee table um, the ground works uh, 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 um, great people have been making art on the ground forever so uh, that works as well but just make sure that you you know that you're dealing with something with some mass and with some density okay so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna just pull it towards me as straight as I can okay and you can see how that's separated nicely okay uh, uh, the, the top off of that, of that uh, block of clay all right nicely uh, before you take it off okay all right I'm gonna put that back I want you to to uh, go down, okay, uh, three cuts. So you can equally uh, part this in threes. So maybe three inches, three inches, three inches. Okay, doesn't matter if it's perfect. Long as you, okay, down one more time, up, and you can see how easily we can take right our parts off of the top. Okay, now each one of these are I would say about five pounds of clay, right? Uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, or less, but you can see how I easily got three blocks off. After that, make sure that you are bagging up your clay nicely and zip tying it because, like I said, we do not want that to dry. Uh, we'll be using this clay or this block of clay uh, throughout uh, the uh, class. Okay, um, you see that I have removed my bag of clay. I want to get that out of the way in a stored um, area. And last thing, uh, or a few more things that I want to recommend before we start is, again, remember making sure that you have a nice, good, uh, solid platform that you can work on. Uh, the, tin the dinner table works just fine as long as you know that uh, clay here is um, a little messy. Um, it's, it's, it's good stuff, so it shouldn't be hurt anybody, but it's just a little messy, so just make sure that you do wipe up before you eat it. You don't want to be, uh, <laughs> you know, biting down on some clay around the house. Um, also, uh, always uh, make sure you have a nice, good, damp uh, towel, um, something that you can always keep wiping your hands down with. Uh, clay likes to stick to uh, the skin, so let's go ahead and make sure you have something uh, nice. Uh, you should have an, also a sponge in your kit as well. Um, you can use that as well and keep that nice and damp right next to you, maybe on a dish or something. But a nice, good, damp rag, again, something that we can constantly clean. But also, uh, whenever we're sculpting, right, uh, uh, keeping your hands a little bit damp, right, or wetting your hands down and then smoothing out uh, works great. So, um, um, you know, make sure you do have that. Uh, also, uh, you should also have your uh, modeling tool kit or your um, uh, sculpting tools. Now, uh, some of your sculpting tools can be a red or a green or a gray, um, but um, still, uh, they're, they're, they're all going to work the same. So you see how there's an array of different types of edges and tools that, uh, that are used for all kinds of shapes and forms. You could imagine that, you know, specific shapes are going to need something round, something flatter. You have a nice plastic knife. So an array of tools. Make sure you do have those very cheap at the art supply store um, or, like I said, in the kit. Um, uh, you're also going to need today is your wire tool, I mean, sorry, your needle tool. Uh, your needle tool might be silver with a little grip. Uh, I have like the old-fashioned uh, wooden one, but a nice needle tool uh, should work. Um, go ahead and grab um, your large trimmer, right? Uh, so this also should be in the tool kit, probably your pottery tool kit, but this is great to take off a, a little bit of clay right now and to, you know, play with some curvature that is, uh, that we can achieve with this. Again, we're working with basic simple shapes first, uh, but still um, uh, tools are going to be uh, needed um, and hopefully you have those. If you don't have those, a lot of times, you know, uh, popsicle sticks work really well, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, just using different type of utensils, screwdrivers, uh, tools or little knickknacks, uh, paper clips, you know, things you can move clay around. Um, all those uh, can be used as well until you get your um, your actual modeling toolkit. Um, you know, nice little chunks of wood. Uh, you can probably find out in the backyard or something, but, um, you know, try your best to uh, uh, do this. A lot of this you can do just with your uh, fingertips as well. So just uh, do your best. 
And um, first thing we're going to do is uh, try to prep our material here so we can start uh, sculpting them. And we're going to work with some simple shapes first. But before we start anything, what I want you to do, okay, um, is to have uh, an orb made first. So you see how what I'm doing here is I'm I'm using the kind of padded part of my palm. Uh, in sculpture, you're going to see that we're going to be able to use, or we're going to learn how to use every part of our hand as a tool, right? And, it, you know, what's great about clay and about sculpture um, is that, uh, or clay and the, the shape of our hands, I mean, they go, you know, they work really well together. I mean, uh, uh, if you look at uh, most modeled portraiture, um, any type of real interesting clay forms, you'll see the hand of the artist or the way that the artist has learned how to use the curve of their thumb right um, the webs of their hands in order to create certain shapes um, so um, uh, right now we're using the pad of our palm I want you to lock these wrists as you're doing it so we really can start to shape and move that clay around one thing we want to be careful with as we're compressing that clay right and as we are shaping that into an orb or a round ball Okay, and that's what we're trying to do is I'm making sure that I don't uh, compress or keep any air pocketing, right? Or if I don't, I don't al allow air to be trapped inside the body of the clay, right? So as I'm compressing, I'm making sure, right, that I'm not doing too much folding, right? If I have something like that, see, I'm kind of pushing that to compress that, right? So I make sure there's no air pockets. We're going to be uh, firing these balls of clay. So uh, any air pockets that are trapped inside the walls of your sculpture can create cracking and breaking. And that's because clay is shrinking as we it's drying. Right now, believe it or not, all this clay is shrinking physically. Um, um, and be sure to look at your clay. You know, there's uh, uh, you know interesting things that happen with just random cutting like that. And clay is, you know, one of the most beautiful things that, or gifts that we have been given uh, on this planet. Um, it's created civilization, um, or the structure of it. Um, but you can see how uh, uh, beautiful the color is, and um, the properties of clay, which is uh, layers and layers of small little platelets, little sheets, almost like little little glass sheets. But it's not glass; it's basically a silica, right? Which is in, in form, in, in in process, it does turn into glass. That's the property of glass. But you can think about these as these little sheets, right? That are pushed and moved, and that's what creates our shape. So you know, um, when you cut and when you're working with clay, I want you to really think about and and analyze clay that way. That you're working with uh, uh, an infinite amount of little platelets of silica, little sheets, right? And those sheets are being um, those sheets are being compressed and moved around, right? And that's the great property of clay that a lot of other materials do not have: is the ability, right, to uh, withstand its shape, but also, almost more importantly, right. The ability to provide you ultimate detail. What I just did is push my uh, thumb in that clay, right? And I want you to do that. Push after you get a nice round ball of clay. Push your thumb into that clay and look. And I'm really mean. Look at every detail of that thumbprint, and even look how that shadow is right, being drawn across the edge of that thumbprint, creating a line or a moon crescent, right? And these are the things that fascinated humans, you know, thousands of years ago. And we're talking 60 to 80,000 years ago. Um, it, uh, and, and it still is mystifying if you do pay attention to it. Uh, what clay can do, how much detail it can capture, and then more importantly, how it can change when you add fire to it, right? How it magically changes into almost a glass solid that then can withstand a lot of different types of temperature, but more importantly, time, right? So take your time when you're making these orbs do your thumbprint, and I really want you to look at it, right? Because a lot of what we deal with in sculpture is inside there. The pattern of the 
fingerprinting, right? The breaking of that edge, creating a line. And in line in sculpture is not a line that you would scratch or draw like in a painting or a drawing. It's the breakage of that light from the edge, right, of that form, creating a 3D, right, line. Um, so pretty beautiful. Um, and and uh, again, what we have to do as artists or as art students is to force ourselves to look as if we've never um, looked before. So um, that curiosity of observation, I, I really want you to, to, to dive into that. Um, find a nice quiet space when you're doing your sculpture so you can really focus in on what the material has to offer. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and keep that down right there, and I'm going to continue to make another orb. And I want you to do this three times. Again. Okay. Now, remember, I really would like you to try to compress and make those orbs, um, spheres, uh, as round as possible. And, um, and again, observe, um, you know, uh, uh, just like w what we were looking at with the thumbprint, um, uh, we definitely are going to want to acknowledge and, and, and really pay attention to the way light uh, breaks off of or flows through an orb or a curve, creating the gradient and all these things that the sculptor uh, uh, pays attention to because uh, when you look at a nice piece of sculpture or any type of sculpture, uh, the environment and the lighting plays a big role. Um, and sculptors really think about how their work will look like at sunset. Uh, how would your uh, work look like in the moonlight, um, you know, in, in the bright uh, high noon uh, sunlight. Um, and I want you to really pay attention to that. Um, so take it uh, outside. Uh, into the sun and and hold it up to the sun and and turn it slowly and look how light breaks off of that orb um, and then you'll also feel in something else uh, you'll feel the coolness of the of the of the clay um, in your palm in your hand and and the density and the weight uh, because clay has a, a true true value. Um, because it is such an amazing material and, and the things that it can do um, provide or add to that content uh, uh, when, you, when you do such things and observe such things uh, such as clay. Um, so uh, uh, always pay attention to that shadow and that light. And like I said, if you do have a nice good spotlight or a good lampshade that you can aim towards your work while you're working, uh, sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. I am going to want you to find a, a piece of uh, wood, a flat piece of wood that you could use to, um, to do some shaping. Um, this is just an, uh, a cut, maybe about a six inch cut uh, of a two by four. Uh, I'm sure everybody in their um, a house or a garage there is something that you can use. If you don't have a piece of, uh, of two by four, uh, maybe you can use like a, 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 an old book or something that you have. Um, but anything that's nice and flat, a wood's preferably the best thing to use when you're uh, uh, working with clay because it's a uh, nice and porous dry wood, of course, uh, and, and it, it, it releases from that clay. Plastic and, and metal really does stick to clay, um, so wood's always the best thing to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to make um, um, three basic shapes. Um, and with those shapes, we're going to make a sculpture out of those. Um, but first, let's talk about some shapes. And, and um, uh, I want you to follow uh, at least the first shape uh, that, I, that I'm going to do, um, um, just so we can uh, talk about some, um, again, form and some uh, 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 elements of um, form and elements of design. Um, so uh, with the two other orbs, you can, uh, after you do some, get some practice with the first one, you can uh, uh, create your own shape with those, okay? And we're uh, going to try to stick today with somewhat uh, of a soft geometric shape. And I, and I like to um, uh, um, say it that way because they are uh, soft edged and, and soft form. Uh, by all means, uh, you can take this to the next level and really 
uh, sculpt these uh, geometric form or your geometric form into the tightest, cleanest that you can. Um, of course, uh, always remember to, uh, as you're working, your clay is um, uh, drying, so uh, keep that damp rag. I have actually two of them. Um, I have this uh, 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 other damp rag, and if things are taking a little bit too long, if you're really taking your time, or let's say that you want to go take a break or go uh, pick up a cup of coffee or something, uh, and you're going to be gone for a while, it's always good to uh, drape uh, some of your clay with the, maybe a damp rag. Okay, and that will keep it dry, so you don't have to worry about putting it in plastic or anything. But as long as um, as a as you do cover it at some uh, to some degree, it should be fine for for a while. Um, so let's get started with the first shape. Again, uh, in order to achieve the best uh, surface, and that's uh, what we're going to be dealing with today as well, is surface. Um, our surfaces are going to be are going to range from a, a fired clay to a glazed fire um, to uh, surfaces in glass that we'll be working with and, and, and other things. So um, um, uh, the smoother and the, the most even and the uh, best surface that you can pound or or compress, right? Uh, the best assignment's going to work for you. Okay, you have a lot of texture on there because we're not really dealing with texture right now. We're dealing with more form, right, and shadow. Uh, so a lot of texture. Right, we'll we'll break that light a little bit, so we won't really see a lot of edge. Remember that thumbprint. Remember the crescent edge. Right, that that curve. We're gonna be playing with that today. Okay, so uh, again, try your best to compress those and keep get those as perfect as possible. And take your time and remember, you have the pad of your hand that creates a nice flat uh, compression, and you have the curve of your palm that can help you provide that roundness okay now next step what I want you to do is easily place that in front of you okay grab your uh, grab your block and I want you to start to compress down again make sure you do have a nice uh, solid table that you can do something like this now I'm not doing a lot of compression okay I'm not really slapping it down I'm controlling that I want you to turn that another way right and I want you to get that nice right angle Okay, you can also turn it that direction again, and you see how I can slowly pad, right, and achieve a, you know, a good, clean, okay, flat edge. And uh, again, it's soft geometry, okay, um, so again, if you have that surface nice and round, right, and if you have a good, nice, okay, smooth block, okay, you start to achieve, um, uh, things like this, um, a pretty complicated shape already. Okay, you got this kind of pitch, and then but also you have this kind of uh, form being developed from that those two edges merging merged together. And as easy as that is, you know, there's a lot you can do with something like that. Um, that's streamlining. Uh, that's um, aerodynamics in, in different types of automobiles, right? Um, that's easily. You know what? Um, you know if you look, out, look outside of any car, the streamlining edge of the fender, right, or or or, or any type of a uh, automobile uh, uh, thing. So, um, or any t or any type of um, um, other type of um, craft. Um, so, I'm going to continue on, right, and I'm going to make basically kind of a, a soft cube. Again, kind of uh, gently tapping it. Okay. And also remember, um, as you are working, hey, be as clean as you can. Again, you want to keep that surface. This clay is nice and plastic, so it should not be too wet. Okay? I'm going to turn that the other way, and again, okay, begin to make a soft cube. And I'm going to try to make that soft cube as perfect as I can. Now, again, there is a balance that you have to um, be, pay attention to of strength and forming. Clay can only go so far, right? So you can't be aggressive with it. You really want to make sure that it's um, that you're dealing with it uh, respectfully. But also, it loves to be moved, all right? So, you know, uh, don't be too timid, okay? But understand that there is a balance okay so simply here I got a nice soft cube a nice soft cube with you know some interesting kind of uh, webbing happening around these forms right uh, on, on the plane 
right? And of course the curvature of that. Um, and I'm trying to get the light perfect just so you can see that edging and that there we go. Yeah, you know, got interesting things happening like that. Okay, and again, as simple as this is, right, when you're, you know, actively doing it, uh, it, it will be more complex of a experience just because um, you're involved with this shape. You created this shape. It's not just like finding a shape or a, or, or going in, you know, and finding a, something in the, you know, in the garage that's this shape or a toy. When you make the shape, as, even as simple as this is, there's a different connection to it and it's going to open up a, a whole other, uh, 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 more avenues of exploration um, because that's the way our brain works. Uh, we see the um, complexity of the shape when you try to create the shape. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side. So I got an interesting uh, cube form here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and return uh, or, or get my second ball. And I'm going to think of another uh, shape. Okay, possibly maybe more of a rectangle. I'm sorry, yes, a, a, a pyramid form. Okay, so I'm kind of making a four. Again, always best to not go too fast and always in midpoint, pick it up. You know, even though you're not done with it, pick it up and look at it. You know, spin it around in your hand. Take this one out to the sunlight. Okay, offer that up and, 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 and take a good look at it. Okay, um, so even at midpoint here, remember, uh, you can take as much time as you want with each one of these cubes. Okay, or each one of these shapes. I have some experience working with clay, so, you know, I might make it look a little bit easy, but um, uh, still, believe you me, as I'm doing this, it's still a challenge, no matter how long I've done this. Now, that's looking pretty interesting right there. I kind of like what's happening there. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to observe it. Okay, like, oh, that's an interesting kind of pyramid form. We'll turn it upside down, right? I'm going to see if I can uh, do some interesting shaping. You see how I have this nice uh, round form here, but let me see if I can just do a little bit of shaping there. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that did something that I really enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to turn that to this corner here, you know, maybe do the same thing. You know, and, and let's probably, you know, work with some, um, again, not, not get too complex, you know, keep a large plane. I mean, Nothing no smaller than, you know, about two inches. It's going to really throw that shadow um, nicely. So don't get too complex with your shape. Just, you know, allow enough surface, right, that we can see that shadow break. Very good. Okay, here again. All right. Now I got this round top here, so I have to make a decision. Should I compress that top, right? Or should I keep that rounded? Well, let me, let me do a little compression. Do a little sharp square at that top. Got a nice square form that I think I can do uh, something with later on. I like that, okay? And, and you see how, uh, you know, um, uh, really go with what feels good. Uh, and that's important when you are making um, sculpture or art in general is, you know, you should trust uh, some level of instinct that um, is naturally in your aesthetic, right? Your aesthetic, your the way you see beauty and the way that you see uh, poetry and all that. Um, so, um, again, but don't overdo it now. Make sure that you are, are keeping control of the form and shape. And also the way I'm rotating it and holding on to it, right? Um, uh, make sure you're not using a lot of your fingertips. See, I'm using a lot of the pads of my hands, right? Doing a lot of this, okay, instead of grabbing, okay? You see, I can continuously work it. Continuously pad it to a point where I'm getting some really, you know, defined edge and defined form. 
And what's amazing about clay is that uh, even though uh, that, that even though it seems like a organic shaped form or an organic quote unquote, um, you know, every, everything is curved and clay moves and there's not a lot of hard edge. You no, know, we don't think of a of a clay as the same thing we think of metal, right? We think of metal with sharp edges. Well, you know, uh, clay is from a multiple of flat geometric shapes. That's what those platelets, those small silicon platelets, silica platelets are, are, you know, geometric, almost crystals, right? That are stacked upon, uh, on top of each other in the, in the trillions, in the infinite of the, that are in this, right? Little sheets. Right, and moisture, right? The water that you feel, the dampness, the cool is what's keeping those stuck together. Just like when you slice a, a, an apple really, really thin, right? You can fan it out, right? And it'll hold its form. Well, the same thing is happening with clay, and that's why we can push it and move it like I'm doing, uh, like so, right? In order to create an interesting shade. That moisture and that platelet structure, those infinite amounts of small little glass sheets, right? silica sheets. And you can see how I can continuously shape simply with a block of wood. Okay, so I got two shapes now, okay? Um, and um, again, uh, you are probably gonna spend a lot more time than me Okay, um, because uh, hopefully you will really enjoy it and want to spend more time with it. Um, very good. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep this to the side. I'm not really done with that shape yet. Um, and, uh, and because what we're really dealing with uh, it, uh, before we start creating kind of a sculpture is, a, is a, the format. Um, so uh, there's a lot I could do with these shapes, right? Um, I could carve into them later on. Um, you'll see later, later on that clay has states. Uh, right now this is the plastic state, meaning that it's malleable. I can form it. Um, when this dries a little bit more, it's going to turn into what's called a leather hard state. And leather hard means that it looks exactly like this color-wise. It's exactly the same, has moisture, uh, feels cold. Uh, you'll see how your clay has a little chill to it. Um, but you can't move it. It's almost like a hard piece of wax. And that's where we can get nice fine detail, right? We can get these nice uh, detailed tools here, right? And carve in some intricate patterns, right? So formatting a form means that we're loosely uh, working on a shape, right? If you look at a, a human head, right? The format of the human head is not the eyes, the nose, the ears, the mouth. It's the overall shape of the head, the, you know, whoever's head, right? So it's a shape overall without all the detail. And that's what this is. We're formatting a shape, right? Okay, now I'm going to move over to this next one and think about another shape that I can do. Hmm, okay, well, I'm going to go down, right? Let me move these away, and, and, and it's great to display what you're, what you're working with, right? Uh, uh, set it in a place that, and let's say you do this, and the next day you continue on with the assignment. Uh, place it somewhere that you can look at, right, and, and, and live with it for a little bit. That's going to really uh, give you ideas on what you can do, right? So I'm going down again. Right, gonna turn that around. Right, go down. Oh wow, look at that! Got my uh, uh, remnants of my thumbprint there. I'm gonna keep that. Um, and something what's really nice about that is that again, uh, we have um, an easy uh, example of edge, right, and gradient of light and tone. Um, so again, pay attention to uh, even the most mundane things, but achieving such a nice flowing edge is, is easy this way of natural way of moving clay rather than trying to sculpt that right remember because we're dealing with platelets we're dealing with sheets of glass and sheets of glass like to be compressed rather than spread because when you spread clay it, it microscopically rips those platelets apart right but compression right works well with that uh, uh, with that type of structure okay going back can I do here? Okay, let me do something a little bit more complex here. Okay, I'm going to go to the side here. All right, I'm going to do a little tap, and I'm going to spin. And you are very welcome to do exactly what I'm doing here. So 
let's say you get a little stuck on your idea, you know, copy what I'm doing. Kind of using a table here almost as like a level. Okay. All right, now I can pick that up now. And um, I have more of a repetitive kind of what we would call a pattern, right? Spinning around there. Okay. Um, so almost like a, a large bolt, right? Or a lug nut, right? I'm going to start to work that edge around and see what I can achieve. If I can really achieve some more pattern movement with those edges. There we go. More complicated shape, so it's going to take a little bit more work, but it's going to get there. Again, a lot of what we're going to be do, doing, um, beginning is the hardest process. Um, um, but once you get into the groove and get into the flow, right, it will come to you. Allow the process to guide a lot of the ideas. Okay, I've done a little uh, zoom in here for, um, hopefully for you to see uh, some of the um, forms that are being achieved and some of the uh, nice edging that's been achieved. Uh, same thing with um, uh, this one right here. I'll move this into frame. Um, again, you can see how nice that, that, that technique is. Um, and again, how simple it is. Um, but I really do uh, would like you to take your time to really get that uh, corner and these edges clean. Okay, and then after a while, you know, you can possibly get some handwork inside there. If you, only if you want to, if you need to. I don't think I need much, but you can see how some light um, movement here with the thumb. Again, um, I have my uh, damp towel next to me so I can just... Treat that surface as nice as I can. Adding some tapping. And then just smoothing it out. And you, you can you can get it pretty perfect. Um, this has, didn't take me very long at all. Um, so uh, again, take your time and enjoy it. This corner here, I'm making a decision of, of uh, either rounding it out or uh, trying to make that a, uh, but I'm going to try tapping and see what happens. I can get a nice edge there. Of course, you remember, I don't want to get too complex with it, but if it feels good, go for it. And as we continue on, I really want you to care more and more about, um, about your forms, meaning that um, at some point, you're going to have to find a, a, a safe place in your house or in your apartment, in your garage, that you can um, um, keep these safe because they're fragile. I mean, uh, if I tip this over, it will alter the shape. So um, you are going to have to uh, get used to placing your uh, work in progress sculptures um, into, in, in a safe area. Also, uh, you might want to grab a hold of a squirt gun that you could uh, ha have water in case you ever need to douse down uh, some pieces. Um, so a nice squirt gun with water, a designated area, um, and with how we keep a uh, clay wet. If I wanted to keep this clay um, 
uh, this consistency, I would drape it with a, a nice plastic bag. So just a good clean grocery bag or something that um, you can keep keep the, the, the clay uh, wet. And you can keep clay wet for a long, long time. Long as you are controlling it. And that's what's really cool about um, um, art and sculpture in general is, is you kind of have to live with your sculpture in order, in order for it to uh, achieve its uh, proper you know, form. Um, because uh, uh, clay needs to dry. Uh, we can't have this clay dry too fast um, because, um, uh, again, remember, we're dealing with uh, small platelets and small uh, uh, sheets of glass, so uh, they're shrinking and they're moving. So um, uh, if it dries too fast, uh, what will happen, it's called thermal shock, meaning that it will crack because there's so much water that has to be released um, that if we release that water too fast, if you keep this out and you let it dry too fast, um, it has the potential to crack, meaning uh, shrink inward and uh, create stress, and that stress leads to cracking. Okay, so um, uh, as you can see here, I have my three uh, geometric forms that I've padded and and I've spent some time smoothing out and edging out. Um, uh, I would like you, before we do the next step, is to uh, place it on something, uh, a nice, uh, um, you know, a platform of some sort, and 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 spin it, or or just walk around it, and just observe kind of um, some of the shapes, forms, and obviously uh, uh, the lines that you have created. Um, so. Uh, uh, what, we're, what we got here is is a set of again light breaking uh, around edges and those edges are creating dynamic shadows right um, so uh, it's always good to walk around your piece um, that you're working with um, from now on because um, sometimes if we are in a static uh, a state if we're just looking at our sculpture from one angle right at all times well we can honestly flatten it out and make it almost a two-dimensional piece so the continuous walking around or looking at your sculpture what's called in the round is key right to uh, experiencing or um, uh, exploring the three-dimensional or the potentials of the three dimension right so um, again walk around your piece uh, take your time again remember um, you have plenty of time at your uh, a, a pace that you can uh, create this piece. Um, so just because I've done it in, in a, uh, the time that the video says uh, doesn't mean that I didn't uh, uh, off camera uh, spend time padding working it uh, as, as well as I could. Okay, but again, work on, until it doesn't feel good anymore. I really trust your instincts on that. Okay, uh, once you've done some observing and you know um, uh, given your creativity some time to, um, you know, respect it and appreciate it. Uh, I want you to go back and get your wire tool. Now here's where we're going to start to change things up a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you are going to slice, right? Give, get, you have two slices for each shape to turn these into four pieces. Okay, um, now uh, let's say there's one piece that you just don't want to cut in three. Well, minimum two. I would try to do uh, two slices. I mean, sorry, minimum one. I would try to do two slices on each one to get four sections out of each geometric shape. But if you just love some one piece and you just want to make uh, do one slice to make two parts, well, then that's okay. Um, so, for instance, I'm going to start off with the simple form here, the cube. So I'm going to go ahead and slice that as evenly as possible in half. Okay, so if you can see what I'm doing, all right, I'm going to cut that directly in half as straight as I can with that wire tool all the way down. Okay, and make sure you are working and... Um, and um, uh, being gentle with the piece, okay? Because remember, it's still very plastic, so any kind of um, uh, movement and damage can alter that shape. So I have two shapes here, okay? Again, and and even though uh, uh, we're continuing on with the process, that you know that you can still come in here and do some work and clean and shape as you go. So by all means, it's okay to combine some of these processes or steps together. 
Now, after that, after you have your two pieces cut, okay, um, let's go ahead and I'm going to do one more cut. Remember, two slices. So that's one, now two to make that into four parts. Gently put that to the side here, gently to the side here. Again, be very careful with uh, the edges. I want you to try to keep some of the sharpness so we do get to play with some of that line. Okay, moving over here. Next step, same thing. This is a little more complicated. Okay, so I have to think about, well, am I gonna slice this there or am I gonna slice it down one of the ridges? Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and slice it down one of the ridges, right down the center, again, as clean as you can. Now remember, let's say if you accidentally mess up or it's clay, you can compress it down to a ball back and do the whole process all over again. You also have a more clay in your spare, right? Um, bag storage, so uh, do it again. Remember, clay is very forgivable and all of these assignments are very forgivable. Okay, down again. And again, gently start to separate. Again, remember, a lot of pads of your fingertips you're using. You're not doing a lot of, okay? And you see these shapes that we're getting. We're dissecting these geometric shapes so we can have some interesting things to begin to combine. Okay, now this one, okay, Pretty easy shape I can dissect into two. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do here. And right there. Okay. So now I have all my parts and pieces. Uh, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces here that we can begin to combine. All right, so let's start off with one shape. Now it's up to you which shape you want to start off with. I'm going to move these to the side. Okay. So I'm going to start off with this shape right here, okay? And then I'm going to start just to begin to combine shapes. Now, you can see here that's the same place. Now you see how I can start to combine things together to start to create different shapes. Now what's nice about this clay, this clay is nice and plastic, okay? Um, and it does stick together, but we're going to add another process to it so we can start to combine and, and attach. It's called slip and score. Okay, um, now, um, before we start the next step, uh, I, I want to let you know that I, I went back and, and got my, um, uh, my block here, and I started to continue to um, work the sides, even the areas that I cut, because when I slice, maybe I didn't do it the straightest that I, you know, uh, could, but that's what the block's for, to come here and back and to each piece, and really work each piece. You know, um, try to get each side as clean as you can. You know, maybe do a little hand work, but um, get these uh, edges as clean as you can, right? And um, again, spread them around. Make sure that you take a good look uh, because now it's time to combine, okay? Now, um, what we're gonna do here now is, is with all these pieces that we've cut, okay? We have a bunch of geometric shapes, right? All types. Okay, very, some are similar because they're from the same uh, uh, larger geometric shape. Um, here, you see how I've cut this edge and I have a little bit, just found that one, a little bit of a, of a crease there. Again, I can fix that pretty easily by doing some tapping. You're going to move the edges a little bit, so make sure you do a, a tap all the way around in the areas you're supposed to, maintaining your shape. Good. 
Um, so going back to that step, uh, we're going to be combining these into a sculpture that hopefully climbs high. Um, and I want you to think about um, uh, structure, um, uh, not unlike uh, stacking blocks, but we're going to attach this uh, with a slip and score technique, uh, which is a very uh, fairly simple um, ceramic technique. Uh, so you should have your needle tool. Uh, make sure you have a brush of some sort. Any type of little brush would work. You could even, if you can, use your finger if you don't have a brush, but and a little bit of water. That's all you're going to need. Okay, um, so uh, before you uh, start um, to um, uh, do anything, or what we start to do, you know, think about uh, how would you uh, 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 have this sculpture begin to take shape into a three-dimensional form. Um, so before we do any connecting, let's go ahead and just play with uh, maybe some um, positioning. All right, so you see how I'm having a pretty interesting... Uh, I got that shape and I just put a space in between, right, to allow some negative space, some good stuff happening there that I, that I, um, that I enjoy. I'm going to keep that there because if I want something to grow up, I need a, I need a bottom, I need a, I need a base of some sort. Okay, I don't want to just go back to the shape that, you know, I initially had, but doing something like this, well, that's, that's pretty interesting. Okay, I kind of like that. All right, um, so maybe after that I start off with a... Uh, uh, stacking a smaller one on top, right? Maybe I do something like that. Now remember, this clay's plastic, so I can put a little pressure on it, right, to um to let it stick, uh, right, before I actually do any connecting with my score. So I'm gonna bring this over here and go. Okay, well maybe I can stack another one on top of here. So again, just begin to have fun. I'm working in a symmetrical way here, um, so um, uh, you're going to do the same thing, right? You're going to, or you don't have to. You can definitely go unsymmetrical, but again, if you want to follow my technique, we'll go right ahead. But I'd rather you do something on, on your own, honestly. But I'm going to change it up a little bit. Again, I got this nice soft corner versus that sharp corner, okay? So, you know, I can make some decisions. I'm going to lay that on its side. Kind of like the way that looks. Um, I've added my... Uh, my spinning uh, lazy susan here, so we can get a little bit more. Um, uh, you can get a more view of all sides. And I think that's important. Remember, I want you to walk around the piece, and if you don't have one of these, but if you can grab a hold of one of these, we'll go right ahead. Um, it, you can see how well that works, um, and you can see how the shadows really start to uh, do something now. Um, now we have um, um, some nice negative space happening here. You see some breakthrough. Um, uh, and always a good thing to do when, you, when you're uh, uh, doing some designs like this is to uh, consider that you're probably like an inch tall. Like what if you're that tall and you could walk through? How would that feel, right? Because this is no different than, uh, than what architects uh, do, right? Um, so uh, uh, in a sense of having a model or a maquette and imagining what the space is going to look like. Um, so you can see how I can just have a lot of fun or we can do some interesting things by beginning to connect or, or stack these forms. Look at that. That's interesting. You know, that almost looks very Mayan or very uh, Inca, right? Um, uh, ancient, right? But then you got this sharp edge kind of piercing. I mean, that's just great to look at. A lot of stuff going on there. Um... I'm going to continue. I'm going to put this one here. And, you know, there, it, this is, you know, uh, so fun to do because uh, it's simple. And, and but uh, why it's so effective visually is, is because it's clay. Uh, because this is a very, very ancient material. And it makes sense to use this material when you're uh, analyzing uh, forms like this because this you know goes all the way back to when the Inca were doing uh, shapes like this and building their uh, amazing empire um, so I mean it's it's um, uh, and this clay this material here was probably was around <laughs> at the time it was just wasn't in your hand um, so I think that uh, it's it's a lot of uh, beneficial things can happen when you do this now I want you to really kind of um decide on on which uh, a uh, uh, stacking mechanism, which shape you want to do, and I want you to um, um, uh, 
find, you know, uh, a, a, a three-dimensional form that you like to look at, right? Something that you can do like what I'm doing right now. Uh, something that you wouldn't mind sitting here and spinning and, and seeing and watching. And that's why I really want you to have your lamp uh, next to it so you can really see how those shadows really dynamically just spill, cut, and they carve. I mean, they, they really dance all over this piece. And again, if you were, you know, this tall, right, um, how would that look, right? Now, um, I like this already. Um, I don't think I need to add anything more. I kind of uh, like these two... Uh, 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 forms facing each other, one taller than the other, one a little bit more powerful than the other, and then of course you got this corridor that I think I could walk through, right? Like this is, you know, uh, you know, 5,000 BC in the Yucatan Peninsula, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, megalift, um, mis mysterious. Um, so uh, I'm really enjoying this, and I want you to understand that uh, you don't have to use every block if you enjoy what you got going on. Go right ahead. But here's the thing. I want you to use as many as you can, right? Um, but saving a few, well, that's okay because the ones that you do save, I want you to make something else out of. So uh, you can basically, you are needing to make uh, something out of everything. So if it is just two shapes for a form that you think is interesting, for instance, like something like that, okay? Um, well, that is just in itself an interesting shape, object, um, you know, uh, uh, you can you can do a lot with this. Uh, meaning, um, imagine if this form here was, you know, uh, six feet tall. It would have a lot more presence, a lot more power. So remember, as artists, you always have to imagine the possibilities. Um, so, in other words, going back, um, if you uh, leave a few pieces out, well, then you must use those pieces to connect something else. So all pieces should be made for something. You must at least connect two pieces. So, you know, you might come out with three little sculptures here, depending on your shape that you choose, the geometry that you use with your board to shape, and how you cut it, right? Um, and also how you like to arrange it. So, um, minimum, obviously, one, because um, uh, we need to show something for the... Uh, for the for the course, but um, you might come out with three pieces. But I'm going to move on to the next step, right? And I'm going to use one of these as an example. Okay, so you might need to take a pick of it or something, so when you deconstruct it to put it back together, um, um, it'll it'll um, you'll be able to follow that photo as a plan. Okay. Okay, I've zoomed in here uh, to the form, and I want to be able to give you guys a good detail of the of the uh, next step. Um, so, um, again, uh, you know, remember your arrangement. I'm going to go ahead and kind of disassemble this one on this side right here. And I'm going to leave those two there because, you know, those are set. That's where I want those to be. Um, have your needle tool uh, ready to go and your uh, uh, brush here or water. And um, that was right there. So, simply all I'm going to do is just trace around the area, you know, that uh, that was sitting on. And then I want you to do a... Um, a score, meaning that um, a, a good kind of a good scratch and a cross hatching. And make sure you get a good a good score. You know, you don't want it too loose because the, the better that score, the better the clay is going to grab onto each other because, you know, what we're doing is uh, moving around those little glass platelets that I was talking about earlier. Um, and we're we'll kind of raising them and just in them, um, kind of a uh, making them come to the surface in all these infinite sharp ways. And then we're gonna do that to the other side of this piece, all right? And then that's gonna be able to uh, allow the clay to grab onto each other. So that's a good score, good enough. Get a little bit of water, right? Dab a little water on there. Let that soak for a little bit, not too much water. That should be fine. Basically, what we're creating is, in uh, ceramic terms, would be called a, a slake um, or a slip. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, guide here and kind of do the same thing. I don't know if you can see me on that camera. I'm gonna try my best um, to have the camera focus in. Let me try that. There we go. I do the same thing here. Score it really well. You know, don't worry about it being too. Clean, you know, uh, what's nice about making sculpture um, is we're not going to be eating off of it or using it. It's not a functional object, so, you know, as long as it holds together. That's what we want. That's a good score. You can see that. 
Okay, that'll do. A little bit of water and just compression, All right? A little compression, All right? You might alter the shape a little bit, but yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now um, I'm gonna have this on top of there. Okay, so you've seen that and that, that's pretty much good, good to go for what we need, for what we're going to do. Uh, that's plenty. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we get uh, the view of the uh, top piece I'm going to attach on and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to move this one out of the way so I don't knock it over. Okay, and continue on. Okay, make sure I get that correct and you know make sure that you are moving it in the direction that you need so you can really see it. Making sure you're getting things, you know I like symmetry. I really enjoy things uh, like that. Um, so you might have a completely different piece. Your, yours might be connected in the center. Yours might be a uh, you know, again, it all depends on the beginning stage of the process where we were, um, where we were uh, uh, using the wood block. We were blocking out the soft geometric form. Get a good score. Make sure that um, you're not lazy on that score because, again, we want these to survive and last a long time. You know, we're, we're going to put this in a kiln. You know, uh, and it has to go up to about 1800 degrees, which is bisque temperature. And bisque temperature is, you know, uh, when um, the, um, the water molecules, all the physical water and molecular water has been burnt out of the clay, leaving um, a more crystal structure because all those little platelets that I was talking about, all those glass sheets, these... Um, all those expand onto each other and grow other crystals and grab on, which makes the clay hard and makes the clay stay together. Because this clay is not fired. If I were to dunk this into that jar of water, right? Um, come back, it would, you know, come back in a few days, it would turn back into soft mud clay, right? Which is called slake. Make sure I get a good one. That's a large score there. Okay. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. Compress down. And don't worry. If you alter your shape a little bit as you're compressing down, you can always take the block to it again and re-sculpt it. It's still plastic clay. And I, and I really want you to do that. I really want you to, you know, after you connect and score everything together, and I'm saying score as S-C-O-R-E, score, right? And yes, just like you're scoring a goal, you're scoring or scratching that um, surface. Okay, that's connected. I'm going to do the same thing with the next two. Okay. score that one just one more time okay this one next so you can see how um you know if, if you had 50 of these shapes and how uh, dynamic of a shape or a form you could create so um and we haven't even added glaze or any type of surface coloring to of these blocks and that gives you a whole other dimension and a whole other um uh you know dimension of possibilities so uh, you know it, it's great about art you know it never really ends it, it, every time you open up a door in, in art um there's a lot there's infinite amounts of doors behind that door um and that's what's wonderful about it is that it it's a continual uh, growth process. So, like I said, even though we're doing something fairly simple, try your best to imagine all the possibilities that could be made or attempted.
Okay, last one. Compress, compress, compress. Can never compress enough. Of course, you don't want to alter your shape too much, but if you have that water kind of seep out, then you're good. Okay, one last score. Got the tall, the tall one. Okay. It's going to be just down these edges here. So make sure I get that correct. And I will say again, um, or I will say again, uh, the word or the phrase leather hard because um, we can wait and you will, you know, when this is uh, sitting in your room or somewhere, uh, like I said, nice and safe, uh, you'll keep an eye on it just like you would a plant, right? And you're going to uh, wake up tomorrow morning and you're going to uh, look at it and you're going to feel it. And it's not going to be dry. It's going to be still hard, but, you know, uh, or still uh, wet, but, but uh, a lot more hard. Um, and you, you, hopefully you'll be able to take maybe a few of these tools and make a few marks. I don't know, you know, um, uh, maybe that will happen. If not, that's fine if you enjoy the surface, but uh, maybe you'll be um, able to play with that term or that um, prop, that, that step in clay, uh, leather hard, where you can carve in, get a little bit more um, possible texture, maybe some more pattern, but minimum, you have uh, these interesting shapes that you could play with. Okay, so I've connected and scored my two together. Okay, um, again, remember, you can make more than two. Um, I think minimum two forms is uh, proper, uh, but remember, you do have to use your extras if you don't put uh, these ones in. I do expect you to see what kind of things you could do um, with your extra shapes, okay? Uh, here is a little uh, close-up view, um, and I lowered the camera down so you can kind of see uh, from my angle. Um, again, really liking those corridors and those shadows in between. Um, I really do feel like I've just launched back in, you know, to, you know, 5000 BC Inca, you know, <laughs> um, so I'm really having fun. Uh, just looking at it, and I really hope that you do too, um, when you do yours. Um, and uh, even though, like I said, it's a pretty simple process, uh, the, it, the results are, are, um, are you know, um, great. Uh, I mean, like that, like this in this area here, you know, um, you know, you got some real nice gradients um, happening, and. Um, of course, in here, you know, uh, you know, there's th that that shadow, and you know, this all, you know, really is fun when you're walking around it. You know, imagine again if you were, you know, uh, this tall. You know, if I stood next to that, you know, at that point, um, that would be massive. You know, be climbing all over this thing, and then of course up here, I really enjoy this um, um this this negative space in between, and these two uh, kind of um forms here kind of uh, facing each other um, are they embracing are they leaning in towards each other are they trying to is one intimidating the other you know that's all for you to decide when uh, you know uh, or for the viewer to decide uh, but that's what's great about sculpture is that um, you know when you play with interesting forms and you really allow light to play a role um, you know uh, by nature we're going to develop some sort of a narrative um, some sort of a story and we tend to do that when we look at the clouds and, you know, um, think that we see things in the forest um, because, of, you know, we're, we're kind of wired that way as, as humans. Uh, so this is a great uh, little assignment and I, I hope you are 
enjoying it.